Welcome to the 805 Focus, where we focus on the events, topics, and people that matter to the South Coast. I'm Dominique Samario with TV Santa Barbara. Here at TVSB, we strongly believe in the power of nonprofits. And one group who has a long history in the Santa Barbara community of making a huge difference is the Alpha Resource Center. For over 60 years, they have provided services for people with developmental disabilities. So to talk about this extensive history that they've had and also some exciting new projects that are going on, I have three very special guests with me, and I'd love to welcome Kim Olson, Marisa Pasquini, and Mark Sucher. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Absolutely. So as I mentioned, your organization recently celebrated its 60th year right here in the Santa Barbara community. Congratulations. Thank you. On that, just to start. But I'd love to hear a little bit about the history and you know how it got its start and uh, how, how it came to today. Well, we were founded in the early 50s by three moms who had children with Down syndrome. And at the time, it was typical for children to be institutionalized. You know, society just didn't have a place for the kids. And these three moms got together and said, our kids belong in our family. They belong in a community, and we're committed to provide an education for them. We want a place where families can gather and learn about raising children with special needs. And we also want to transform the community so that the community is more welcoming of people that are different. And so 60 years ago, like you said, that was a, a very different world for people with disabilities. Is that a well, fair we, statement? Absolutely. And we, we hold those values today. Um, we're about educational opportunities. We're, we are a family resource center so that throughout an individual's lifespan, whether they receive a prenatal diagnosis or, or planning for the care of their, their adult child after they're no longer able, we're there to provide that support. And of course, we're always about changing the landscape in our community so that everyone is respected and treated with dignity and valued for their contribution. I think too, back then, there was um, some fear in parents. They didn't necessarily know because there weren't resources in the community. So if their doctor said, you should you know, put, place your child in an institution, that's what they believed. So that's what's kind of special about our founding families is that they didn't buy into that. You know, They decided, no, these are our children. We want them to be with their siblings. They want, we want them to have every opportunity that their siblings would have. And then they just made it happen. It really must take someone special to sort of go against the grain. Like you said, you know, if you have people that are experts telling you to go down a path to, to change that course, it's pretty powerful. But imagine how many lives have now been touched because of their, Absolutely. Because of their strength. Mm -hmm. Really, from three families in the early 50s to over 2,000 families in the county that we provide support for, it's extraordinary. That's absolutely incredible. So making it 60 years, what did that mean to the organization? Well, I think that our 60-year anniversary really represented um, how we have moved forward through the times, how we're still relevant, but we're still connected to our core values. Um, during that 60th year, we were able to honor some of our founding families that are still with us today. Really? In fact, yes, the... Um, the whole year was dedicated to Bob Coleman, who was a community leader and also a really important part of our Alpha family in creating Alpha as a community-based organization that um, all families would have access to. And then we were also able to look at our new families with young children who, very similar to those founding families, are just committed to providing everything that their children need to thrive in life within the community at school, um, having friends and resources, and having every opportunity to, to do well in life. So I know we've touched on a little bit of the history and the fact that you're working with um, both people with developmental disabilities, but also their families. So tell me a little bit, if somebody was to look at your organization now, 2014, 
What sort of programs, activities, and uh, services do you offer? Well, like I'd mentioned before, we do um, prenatal support. If a family comes in with a prenatal diagnosis, um, most often, though, we'll have a referral either from the hospital or a social service agency when any child is born in our county with a developmental disability or at risk. Um, it could be as simple as a warm voice at the end of the phone. Um, we introduce ourselves. We make that family know that we're available to them with information and resource and referral service. Our children and family team is made up predominantly of parents themselves wow. so that um, parents really get a warm welcome to the new Alpha family. Um, they may stay with us their entire lifetime. They may see us at times of transition or of need. And the kind of support may be maybe navigating the medical system if their child has complex health care needs, or it may be I haven't slept in slept in, you know, two months. Can you help me with, you know, getting my child into a, a regular sleep pattern? So it's really diverse, it's individualized for the family, and again, it's, it could be as technical as, as getting access to services or just a warm and friendly voice at the end of the phone. So you're really there to you know, guide people through this entire process, any questions they might have, services they need. Mm -hmm. I, just in thinking about people who, I, who I've spoken to have, who've used the children and family services, just knowing that there's other parents that have been there and that they can, they can turn to these parents. They have a community of support, and it's so important to have just people that understand where you are and um, can also kind of maybe they've been through the next step. So they can say, oh, well, this happened to me. Now we're here, and it gives people hope. Yeah, I think anybody can relate to that because no matter what's going on in your life, to know that you're not alone Mm -hmm. must be so, so incredibly critical, particularly imagine you have a new child and then maybe one um, who has some special needs or you have additional questions. That's an incredible service. What about as they, they as grow they up? Age. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as they age, um, although family support continues throughout the lifespan, um, if they're, you know, once they're teenagers, then we provide um, a social rec program starting at age 13 and they engage in activities that typical teens do, whether it's, you know, a night at the movies or staying up till midnight to see uh -huh. the opening of the next. I'm not. I'm going to date myself. Harry Potter. I, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Some something that's popular right now. Something that's popular. <laughs> you know, one of those uh, superheroes. But um, yes. you know, trips to Disneyland, camping trips, social rec dances, um, and they do it with their peers. So you know, it's an opportunity for. Um, folks with special needs and, you know, typical developing peers to socialize together. And that, that extends through young adulthood and, you know, they create a social network and especially the teenage years. I mean, sorry to say most teenagers are into pointing out differences and so there is a sense of belonging, there is a sense of, you know, gaining self-confidence, of, of uh, building that social network if you need extra support, and they're all about the fun, though. It's all about the fun. That's amazing. And Marisa, as they are adults, are some of them living on their own and still seeking some services from Alpha? Absolutely. We have such a wide range of the types of services that we provide and the types of people that come to us. So um, we have individuals that need a need a great deal of care we I'm just thinking today when I was downstairs at lunch um, there was there's a young woman that needs um, support eating and um, some very particular medical support and she's able to have that there and we have another young man who works in the community five days a week but comes to us and does his banking with us has some social opportunities through us. So 
adult services is very diverse because the people that we serve are very diverse in their needs and in what they want for their life. So whatever it is that they need and want, we help them to create success around that. That's great. And Mark, you've, you've been to Alpha Resource Center before, right? Yeah, I've been there um, when Slingshot was first opening on up. UCP working um, took me on over there on a couple of different occasions. And then after one of my mentors in UCP working had left the program, my parents and Catherine Legro, who's on my supported living um, program called San Felipe, um, decided to look into Slingshot as for me to work on getting my art, um, not only um, being able to sell, but also be able to show like I can get like some sort of recognition. And I was like very honored when Susan um, that offered me this opportunity to come here to your studio to discuss a little bit about Slingshot. Well, that is the perfect transition, and we are grateful to you for being here. But um, I think, as I mentioned at the start, that there are some exciting new projects going on with Alpha Resource Center. And as you might have heard Mark mention, Slingshot. So tell me about Slingshot and then how that ties in for this incredible opportunity for somebody like Mark. Right. Well, in our strategic plan, uh, we were really t struggling with um, addressing the fact that we had over 75 people on our waiting list for services, just in, in our adult services. Wow. And looking at a way to create a win-win-win situation, we... Um, had always provided some access to art, had an art studio program within um, our Cathedral Oaks site, um, but we had some very creative and innovative staff that looked around the country at what innovative art programs there were available, and that really gave birth to the idea of Slingshot, which is a in downtown. 220? 220 West Cannon Bernito. <laughs> yes, we would love everybody to go visit. Right. Uh, and it's a gallery and working studio. Wow. Okay. Mark recently joined and they recently had their grand opening uh, a couple of weeks ago. Right. Yep. So new this spring in 2014, there is an art gallery in studio right in our very own downtown Santa Barbara. Yes. Mm -hmm. And am I correct that all the artwork is done by people with developmental disabilities? That's correct. So That's if you incredible. go to the if you go to the gallery, it's open Monday through Friday from 9:30 to 4, and there's about 34 artists currently that are working there, creating all kinds of in incredible art. And Mark has some that he's going to share. Um, and the artwork is just, I mean, it's wonderful as it is. But as the artists participate in the program, they just become more confident, and their work. Um, transforms it's it's incredible i don't think there's nobody in the community that would not love to go and visit slingshot whether you're a contemporary art lover or not you'll get a lot out of it um mark do you want to yeah, do you want to show some of your pieces yeah first of all um i love the fact that your shirt is actually that design is your yeah. art correct uh -huh. and this is actually the um masterpiece that's incredible so you'll notice that is uh, what the start was, and there's Mark. <laughs> now you're you're a clothing designer, I think, pretty much. So. Well, yeah. Um, one of the other projects is that I have a B picture that is um, over here that I'm currently working on. I have two versions of it. The first version I have with a planet that it's orbiting, and then the other one is going to be for a is it going to be the design that I'm going to be putting on a piece of wood canvas that I had painted over at um, Slingshot. Wow, where do you come up with these ideas? Well, the idea of the um, insect that I had done came from a book that I had bought at the library, and I did some alterations so that it wouldn't be um, Persianism. 
It's very good. <laughs> good job. <laughs> so I changed the look a little bit. And then um, that's where the wasp came in from that is orbiting the planet. And that's where the other version of the same wasp came in for my um, wood canvas. Why do you like creating art? I guess I should ask, do you like creating artwork? I love creating artwork. I've been actually doing stuff in the forms of art through my entire life. I've been building model airplanes, building model cars, building model spaceships. I've been going to art class for during the summer as I was growing on up and going to school. And so basically after I had gotten in, um, accepted into microenterprise, I was working on art and actually getting um, my stuff not only sold, but also being able to keep the money that I had sold um, and put it into a business account. So it's really given you some freedom too, because now you, you're earning money from the art and that's just incredible. Yeah. It's really, really incredible. What do you, what do you think of Slingshot? I like Slingshot quite a bit because there's a lot of um, things that go on there, you know, and also the um, people who work there are enjoying to um, be around. There's also sometimes when some of the other um, artists who go to that program do some crack with jokes, you know, <laughs> and we all like have a little family consensus about it. And also the music they, they play to help the artists, you know, focus on what they're doing is really beautiful. I love that. You, you're talking about kind of the environment of Slingshot and that it's a really positive place to be. What would you describe the environment at, you know, Alpha Resource Center to kind well, of put it of to the next level? One of the things that struck me when I was talking to Mark recently was he talked about the energy and light. And I think that's um, not only true of Slingshot, but all of the areas in which Alpha does its work. It's, it's high energy, it's full of light and life. Um, there's a sense of anything is possible and nothing is impossible. And we've certainly learned that working as part of a team, working as part or working towards a vision is is absolutely doable, so. That's a really beautiful thing to create, and you know, probably a little bit of a testament to the 60 years, because that takes time to really establish that kind of vision and then have everyone share in it. Um, so that's really an incredible accomplishment. Um, I know there are some other programs you have. I mean, you have Slingshot, you have the you know, Alpha Resource Center, but you also have thrift stores, correct? So more Absolutely. locations in the community. Alpha thrift stores, I hope you know them. <laughs> yes. And so tell me um, about them and, and how they're related then to the, the program. Well, we own and operate the thrift stores. So um, they're all part of the Alpha team, um, staffed by, this, by um, Alpha employees. Okay. Um, 100% of the proceeds go to support what we do. Um, many of the services we provide have no other source of support except through private donations and the proceeds from our thrift store. So, um, you know, we've got two stores out in the Goleta Old Town Corridor. Um, our most recent store we opened over on Milpas. I've seen that one. <laughs> donations 100% deductible and your patronage is welcomed. So that's the great thing. There are actually two ways to support it. One, we can take in, you know, goods that are still great, but you can't use them all, all the time, right? And then the other thing is you could shop there. I'm sure there are great finds. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. they, um, you know, it's, it's the best uh, example of recycling for this community. Just uh, uh, reuse it, retool it, and refashion it. And support a really amazing Absolutely. organization. Yes. Absolutely. So I want to sort of focus on, on the bigger the bigger picture. Um, why do you think it's important to have an organization like Alpha Resource Center in a community? And as you mentioned, I mean, this is Santa Barbara County wide that you're working with people. So tell me about that, Marisa. I would say that um, having an inclusive community program for people with disabilities 
serves the whole community. It enriches our community by having people that, all types of people participating in it. Um, our folks bring such a great um, perspective to our, you know, our lives and I believe to the community as well. So um, with, without Alpha, so many of our folks are either, they're not, they're not doing all the things that they could be doing. So we really provide that, that place for them to thrive and we enrich our community. That's what I would say about it. What about you, Kim? What do you think? Well, you know, I'm always looking to um, what's the next breakthrough. Um, you know, the fact that Mark is earning money through something that he loves is, a, you know, a tremendous progress. Um, the fact that a lot of our, and most of our folks are underemployed or unemployed. You know, that's the next barrier that we need to break right. so that, you know, we see the value in their contribution. I remember our volunteer program and our folks are doing over a thousand volunteer hours a year. But when we first started, it was trying to convince people that their volunteer help was actually an asset. And so you have people from your organization volunteering their time. Absolutely. It's in the community. Enriches uh -huh. their life. Well, that's a community asset right there. You and know. gives back. We've been with Meals on Wheels for over 15 years delivering um, right. Meals. To me, it, right. Um, you know, we have a group that works at the soup kitchen. We have a group that volunteers at the Santa Barbara Zoo. It's their way of giving back. And in, and in a way, too, the community just kind of goes, oh, of course. Uh -huh. Of course. All of our lives are enriched when we give back. That's perfect. What do you think, Mark? Do you think it's important to have an organization like Alpha Resource Center and Slingshot in particular? I think it's um, a very um, good um, company of both Slingshot and Alpha because um, Alpha has one type, has like several type sources within their facility, but then when they decided to open up Slingshot, that created a whole new um, outlet for the um, artists who go there, for the staff who teach them on what they could do to help improve their creativity, the suggestions that they say over at Slingshot for help out a lot. Like for example, when I did my first wood painting canvas, I was doing it the way how I felt like it needed to be done. But then when I started on my second one, they said, well, why don't you go and you paint your um, mountains color on the, whole ca on the whole canvas after you had gotten the primer on and then shape the mountains the way how you want them to be shaped with um, black paint, with a black paint line and then um, decide to do what type of sky or if you want to do a sunset plus sky type outlet and then put the vehicle um, on last. So you were learning from them, Yes. right? Yes. That's really neat. Are you grateful for their support? I am very grateful for their support. The staff are really considerate and helpful. You're able to ask any questions that you need to ask to help improve what I'm doing. I'm able to show the progress to certain, to the staff on how things look as I'm moving, as I'm progressing it along. Like I have one piece that I'm still in work, which is my second version of the wasp that I had drawn in. It's still working um, progress type thing. But once after I have the design done to the way how I um, like it, I'm then gonna transfer it then to that second wood canvas painting that I had mentioned. That's amazing. I think more importantly, though, I bet the community is grateful for your work. I am very grateful. They you know, get to go into Slingshot. Slingshot mm -hmm. has given us, it's a new avenue to connect with people you wouldn't typically connect with. And the art community has been very receptive to Slingshot, um, looking for ways to collaborate with our artists. That's great. Um, we're looking forward to a project that we're going to do with the Museum of, of Contemporary Art that integrates artists throughout the community. So it's, again, 
a new, a new barrier has been broken. Well, I think it's just really incredible and you guys deserve to be commended because it's really a groundbreaking idea and uh, just, you know, shattering some barriers. So incredibly, we're coming to the end of the show. <laughs> Time always flies by. Um, so I want to ask you, there's still work to be done, as you mentioned. What are some barriers that still need to be broken? I know you mentioned, you know, that they're underemployed or under or unemployed. Share with me uh, briefly, what are some barriers you're hoping you can, you can shatter in the next 60 years? Well, you're asking someone who always thinks really, really big. <laughs> I like so, that. Go big. Yeah. You know, why not? So I look at our toddlers now and I talk to their family members and really what I hear is alpha, you know, 60 years from now, we're the invisible support to a network of community that welcomes the participation of folks that would be typically different, you know, that we've broken the barrier of employment, we've broken the barrier of housing, of kind of poverty because of the employment situation, healthcare is accessible, um, right. Slingshot is in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> in six years, Slingshot will be all over the world, yeah. right. well, on the map yeah, of the world. You know, I think that would be a really good um, idea to make a second slingshot type store so that um, they can have um, more people from Alpha who are interested in doing art skills or learning something new in their lives would be able to go to it. And as they mentioned about Alpha thrift store, I go there occasionally and I actually do shop and get stuff there because I've noticed that they have sold um, computer equipment there, they wow. sold, they sell stereo equipment, they sell TVs, they sell all sorts of different clothing, um, kitchenware, um, furniture. It's your one-stop shop, huh? Oh, sorry, absolutely. <laughs> this is a personal example of your, it's your best advertisement, <laughs> but you know, with that, I, I just again really want to thank your organization for being here, and Mark um, is one of the original artists from Slingshot. Thank you so much thank for you. coming today and sharing your art. I'm excited that the viewers were able to see uh, multiple pieces of your work, and uh, I just really wish you guys the best for the next 60 years, and check out the art gallery and studio. Tell me the address one more time. 220 West Cannon Perdido. Perfect. Yep. And if any of our viewers have um, additional questions and want to find out more information, they can visit your website, Absolutely. which is alphasb.org, correct? That's right. That's correct. Beautiful. So thank you again, uh, Kim, Marisa, and Mark for being on the show. And thank you for watching. Um, again, this is the 805 Focus, where we focus on the events topics and people that matter to the South Coast. But most importantly, we want to thank the staff and the volunteer crew who make this show possible. We couldn't do it without you. And until next time, get out and enjoy your South Coast. Thanks for watching. Bye.